Holler if you hear me, and welcome to Tuesday night in my corner of YouTube land, ladies and gentlemen. It is the top of the hour, 10 p.m. Eastern, and we are all here for a, another little moment of seeing what it is I do, which is, of course, draw while we go on here and get ourselves something to see that's a little bit more interesting. And, of course, one of my subscribers is also a regular customer of mine, Mr. John Gennardi. Thanks to him, yes, he was the one who brought home my Bob Ross Deadpool piece. That was the one. That's the one I had left in my profile. So, of course, I think I'm bringing it over because now that means that we can really get into the heart of the matter of the other side of what I meant by taking all that artwork I had that was you know, old, clogging up my stuff, clogging up my pages, obsolete, just suffocating my profile, suffocating my portfolio, suffocating the pouches. I keep my artwork in. I don't have like a big file or a closet. I just keep my artwork in there. Although now I'm thinking about it. I do have plastic shelves that I keep my Playboy collection in. And I might actually change and rearrange where the sleeves I keep my artwork in. I might put the Playboys in and use the shelves for keeping my artwork in. That's one concept of reorganizing and rearranging. But that might come after I go and arrange everything in my receipts and in the bills that have been paid and all that for this year's return, that sort of detail. But of course, we already know how about, about that coming up. But other than that, yes, we'll be seeing something like this as in pencil form, the latest edition of Deadpool and the Bob Ross outfit. Of course, this is based on a J. Scott Campbell piece, which I have right here. Yes. The Marvel Art of J. Scott Campbell, Volume 1. And there's, if we flip through into the middle section, we'll see us past the She-Hulk sometime after MJ and Gwen Stacy. And uh, I thought I am going to be a, well, actually, yes, there is going to be wrestling going on. So this is Tuesday night, our push to Tuesday segment of HCW Monday Madness. Yes, that is going to still be happening, but I just want to give you all a demonstration. From this piece, this cover of Deadpool that Campbell drew, from there, we're getting our Deadpool right over here. But if, first, of course, we are now going to get you all right back to what's happening live from the Little Series Arena, of course, HCW Monday Madness. And welcome, everybody, once again to HCW Monday Madness. We are, of course, live from the Little Caesars Arena right here in downtown Detroit. Of course, it is I, the one and only, and, of course, my fan right here, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Yes, Oklahoma. He's got to say everything three times because that's his gimmick. That's how he rolls. And now let's all see what we're going to have in the very beginning. What is going to be going on? What are we going to be hearing? What are we going to be seeing? Well, we might be seeing something coming in, but I do not believe we're going to be getting tonight with a match. I think we might be beginning tonight something involving someone else. So I do believe we got a little gentleman coming out here who might be more involved with a sock. They might be involved with anything to do with wrestling. Who is that? Oh, he's here right now. It's Mr. Sacco. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for you all to enter the Mr. Sacco Funhouse. And now I showed all of you what I business I meant to Mr. Nick. And now I'm going to show you all who is going to go and demonstrate what business I have and what I mean to that gentleman out there uh, I know is watching me backstage shaking in his little thousand dollar alligator boots but this is a gentleman you're going to have to know and you're going to have to hear because eventually you're going to want to know and hear from this man over and over and over again now you might want to go and dim the lights a little because he practices a certain kind of lifestyle that let's say, is something that requires a lot of darkness. What does he mean by this? What, what, what does Mr. Sacco mean by this? I don't know what he means, Oklahoma, but let's see what's happening. Okay, what's this? What? Where are the lights going? Who is this? What? 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 Why is he walking so slowly? What? Why is he all in black? What? He, he's walking past the first ring. What? What's he doing? He's taking his time getting to the ring. He's getting up there. 
Welcome, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. You will know me, you will hear me, and you will, of course, fear me. Now, as you know about Mr. Sacco, but I bet there are not many of you out there who know who I am. And, well, I am something that might have been a myth or a legend or a work of fiction for all of you to hear before. But trust me, there is nothing fictitious about what I do. I live to drink the blood of mortals like you. And now I come here to have the freshest and the strongest supply to feed as well as become champion. And whether or not you all truly believe me, you will all come to fear me. Remember the name. A simple name. I've had many names before in my life, but they have all been identities that were my way of disguising myself before all of you. But now, I grow tired of disguise. Simply remember the name. Vomcula. Well, I don't know what's who. Vomcula? Vomcula? What is he? Some kind of European man? I don't know there, Oklahoma. I'm pretty sure he might be somebody that we're going to have to go and be a little scared of, but I think that's a little ridiculous. Come on. What's he saying? He's some kind of vampire or something? Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, vampires are just a myth. Come on. This is wrestling. This ain't no damn soap opera. What are you going on out there? Come on. Come on. Get on back here. Get on back here. Uh, well, I know, yes, that might be. A little odd to hear that, but now we're going to get back to uh, backstage here where our own Cathode Ray is going to be interviewing the man in charge of HCW once again, Mr. Nick. We're going to be cutting to you, Cathode Ray, right back there. Yes, this is Cathode Ray, and I am live with the man in charge of HCW, Mr. Nick. Now, Mr. Nick, of course, you were seeing, well, along with everyone else, what mm, this Mr. Sacco fellow had to say. Now, what it is do you think is really meant by this Vomcula? Do you think that this Vomcula character really is what he claims to be? Do you th he said he's he said he was a vampire, but did not really say it out loud. What do you think? I think that all of this you're seeing, it's an awful lot of conceit. It might put on a good show, but there is also a line in which we have to stop blurring of what's simply a show and what is supposed to be real. And this may be a world of entertainment, but I know for certain that if Mr. Sacco thinks he's going to take my company and try to make some kind of freak show out of it, starting with freak number one, and Lord knows how many other freaks are going to be out there he's going to try to put in here, not a single one of them are going to ever take this company over. Not a single one of them will ever get a title. Not every single one of them will ever get the chance to be a star. I swear to that. I swear on my life. Mr. Sacco, you and that freak of yours, Vomcula, you think you can do better than me? You think this is going to be yours? Well, you think you've got a match? You want a match? Well, then right here, right now, tonight, you and that little freak of yours, Mr. Sacco, are getting a match. You understand me? We'll be seeing from you later tonight the way you are going to always be hearing from me. But, but uh, Mr. Nick, are you sure that you have a wrestler lined up ready for it? I'll tell you about that later on. I'm just going to go and find who in that locker room has the balls to stand up against this freak show. Well, I think Mr. Nick is done for the night there explaining himself. So, OK, we're going to get back into the ring now. Back to you out there, Oklahoma and Jimmy. OK, now here we are all back now going on in to... Uh, this in the middle of the little Caesars Arena. We don't know the rings on back there. The rings on back. What's happening? What's happening? I'm not sure. Oh, what? What's this? We got Kill Zone coming out. Kill Zone coming up into the ring. Okay, where is he? He's going back in. He don't look too happy. That's right, Oklahoma. He looks like he might be a little upset. Then again, get when supposedly you are in league with the man in charge, only for him to let someone puke on you, a complete stranger from the crowd. You're not going to be happy about that. I want all of you shut up for a second, because I, of course, have got something to say. Now, I know what you all think. Oh, I'm just a brat 
oh, just because I got a contract with Mr. Nick, that somehow means I'm some entitled little baby. Well, if you want to see a baby, you got to look at what that little Covington bastard out there was talking about, about how many generations he has in his family, how many wrestling holds he knows, how he knows everybody, how he's got all his own little private following on social media. He's got his own commentators. Well, you know what I got? I got me, myself, and I. I got into this business. I got Mr. Nick to pay attention to me and sign me to represent HCW morning, noon, and night on the count of me actually proving it with my own two hands. What the hell do you have? How good would you be? Would you be able to make it without that name behind you, Covington? I want to know, Covington the fifth, if you were Covington the first, could you make the chance? That UFC guy, Colby Covington, could come in here and make himself more of a fucking champion right here, right now in this business than you ever could. So you know what? How about you go and how about you actually prove to yourself that you are worth our time, let alone my time? You've got 30 seconds to get your ass out here. Oh. It looks like Killzone's on fire tonight. That's right there, Jimmy. I do believe he might be a bit perturbed. They're going on in there. Oh, wait. And here he is. Daniel Covington V. He's coming on in. He looks focused. He looks angry. He looks like he's going to break some heads open. You don't go in there and speak of a man like him, a proud man with a proud family history, and you do not ridicule this man's history without him taking you up on that challenge. They got that fire in their eyes. What's going on here? Oh, we got, oh, oh, drop kick. Oh, drop kick into the corner. Covington's got kill zone on the ropes. Oh, what's he doing? Oh, no, he's going to throw him. Oh, he's flinging him now. Oh, good clothesline. Oh, and kill zone jumps and, ah, oh, got him right in the back. Oh, kick to the back. That ain't good. That ain't no wrestling move. That's just brutality. All right, what's he going to do? All right, he's pulling him up. Oh, God, he's got him. Oh, oh, he's pulling him over. Oh, he's twisting his legs. Oh, he's got a Boston crab on Covington. Boston crab. Boston crab. Boston crab. I don't believe it. Oh, oh, what? Oh, Covington, he's going. He's going. Oh, 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 the broken up, broken up, broken up. Oh, now what's happening now? What's happening? I don't believe. Oh, ah, oh, cross body block. He got him. He got him. Oh, he's stuck on the ropes. He's got Covington stuck on the ropes. No, he's going for another clothesline. He's going to do it again. Oh, got him now. He got him. He got him. Oh, what's he going? He's going to the top rope. Oh, no, he's going up. Oh, 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 he's got the top rope. What's he doing? Oh, moonsault. Oh, God, that ain't no moonsault. That was a shooting star press. I do believe that is the correct usage of that term, Oklahoma. You're damn right it is. Now, what we go? Oh, what's he doing? Oh, what's he going to do? Oh, no, he's got something with his feet. Oh, no. Oh, God, he's got his boot on his crouch. Boot on the crouch. That ain't too good. Oh, that can't be good. That can't be good for anybody. The family jewels are all got to be smashed all over the place. Yeah, that can't be fun. That's got to be a bad thing. Oh, what? Oh, no. Uh, oh, I think I think we've got... It looks like... Oh, my God. Killzone has been passed out. Killzone doesn't look like he's conscious anymore. Oh, no. I can't believe it. Oh, Lord. Now, what, what's going? Where, where are we doing? What are we going on with? And now... Oh, God. Another, he's going for another shooting star press. Oh, oh, he rolls out of the way. Oh, oh, Covington's on his back. What's he going to do? Oh, oh, leg drop. Oh, leg drop. Leg drop from kill zone. He's got him. What's now? What's he going to do now? I don't know. Oh, God, this is under. Oh, God, what's this? Enough's enough. Oh, he's got him up. Oh, gorilla press. He slams him down. What's he going to do now? Oh, leg up. Oh, God. He got him in the balls. Boot to the balls. Oh, and a, oh, another boot to the balls. Oh, oh, God. Three boots to the balls. Come on. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, he's lifting up. He's dragging him up. What's he going to do? Oh, he's got him in the corner. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten punches. Oh, my God. Ten straight blo unblocked shots to the head. Covington's got to be on Queer Street now. He's on Queer Street so damn hard, they're going to have to change the name and home and address of his house to Castro Street in San Francisco there, boy. That is most definitely true, Oklahoma. Oh, God, no, what's he going to do now? Oh, what's he going to do now? He's got him up over the head. Oh, oh, knee over the back. Oh, knee on the... Oh, God, he's knee his back. Oh, Covington's got to be down. What's he going to do? Oh, and now referee. One, two, three. Oh, and there we go. There we go. 
There we go. Killzone has just won his first match in the history of HCW. Covington don't look like he's moving. It don't look too happy. Oh, that is definitely a man who looks satisfied to have proven himself in the squared circle tonight. And this Covington gentleman, I believe he might want to go and sit out a little bit. He might want to go and go and sit down for a second. I'm not sure about that, but maybe we might go and it's probably going to take a while for Covington the fifth to get up because this don't look too good for his family history to lose another match in this kind of fashion. But now we're of course going to be cutting back backstage now to the arsenal with uh, corn pop corn pop. Are we late? hearing you? Are we getting to you? Oh yes. Here he is. Right here, right now, we're back. Where Corn Pop? Corn Pop, where are you? Where are you? You will be a little bit sad today because Corn Pop may not be here, but trust me, the arsenal is in excellent hands because I don't really need these weapons, but they do give a good ambiance to the blaze, don't they? Yes. Of course, you know me. I happen to be the ultimate luchador, and since our corn pop friend seems to be absent, I will go out there and prove to all of you with simply my words why. I will not just be a great champion, I will not just be a great wrestler, but I will be the ultimate lover of all people, places, and things relating to wrestling as a whole, not just simply the world of HCW, homeboy. Now, of course, uh, you know me. I was simply a boy from Tijuana with a dream. And you have that little man who went out there into the world because of the family he had. Was it five generations there you have there, Mr. Covington? Mr. Covington the fifth? You, and look what all of that time, all of that legacy, you're crying. You're crying like a little bitch. And look at me, little man grew up like I did in Tijuana. Three feet tall at 15. My mother thought I was a midget. I had to go even to a doctor. Do you know what it's like to have to go to a Mexican doctor and have him explain to your mother that, no, you're not a midget. You're just fucking short. Everybody, everywhere that wasn't in my immediate family, beating me up, teasing me over and over again, calling me little, calling me all these things, calling me mini, mini this, mini that. Just simply calling me a midget. If anything, I welcome them calling me a midget because it was something I understood. Even in Spanish, I did not understand some of the things they were calling me. But now, as you saw, I took all of that, all of that mockery, and I built myself into this spectacular body. So when I look at all of you and ask, do you think I'm sexy? I know that this is the ultimate rhetorical question for the ultimate Luchador, because it does not matter, homble, what you really think, because I know what you really think, that I am the ultimate luchador and the ultimate Latin lover. Oh, yes. And you know what? I'm also skilled at making a very fine taco. And I'll be coming back to all of you very soon. Do you think I'm sexy? Well, I do agree with that gentleman out there, that one Mr. Luchador. He is quite the handsome gentleman. I won't call him sexy. I ain't going that way. I ain't the kind of guy living on Queer Street like Daniel Covington V has still got to be living on Queer Street after a beating he just took from Killzone like that. I don't know, but that was one hell of a match there between them, I would say. I would say that. Oh, I'd want to see a rematch about that. I don't know, but we might be seeing something developing between the two of them. Some kind of a brawl, some kind of a going on there. I don't know, but okay, we got out the ring. Covington the fifth is gone, but now we got there's some commotion in the back. I don't know, but now, of course, the number one seed in the heavyweight title tournament we've got for the inaugural heavyweight champion for HCW is out here in the back now, of course. Vomit Vega, what's going on there? All right, now. God, I'm fucking bored. I don't got anything to do. I'm just waiting for a man to have a match. Hey, hey, who are you? Hey, hey, man. Where are you going? 
on a mission. What kind of mission? Are you sure about that? I don't know what my mission is. If you don't know what it is, then why are you on it? Somebody owes me answers. Oh, what kind of answers? Uh, I mean, I'd like to introduce myself, but hey, uh, you've, you've got a name. Do you need any help from me? I was just asking if you have a name, man. I mean, everybody's got a name, something like that. What's yours? Come on. Come on, man. Come on. You don't recognize me? Alex, it's you. Come on. Please excuse me. I need to find someone. What? Who? 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 Who's he? I, I'm. I'm. Assuming, I think now we figured out. So whoever this is, this gentleman who's been going around and survived that match of corn pop, I do believe that where we figured out what his name might be, Alex. Um, unless this man might be mistaken, our little vomit Vega friend. And, or, I don't know. I don't know either, Oklahoma. But what I do think is that this guy, our friend vomit Vega. He's now just putting out another layer of mystery to who this gentleman is. For for the time being, we might call him Alex, but I don't think that might really be true because we don't know anything. Just when we think we might finally get an answer on this guy, we instead get another question. Thanks to Vomit Vega, our number one seed in our title tournament. Now, what? There's someone else backstage. No, so, oh Lord, what's going on here? Oh, God, what am I going to do? I need this match. Oh, God, where the hell? Where is anybody? Where? Come on. Where? Where the hell? I can't even find a damn locker room in this arena. Hey, sir, sir, Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick. Oh, not these guys again. Hey, Mr. Nick. Yeah, you remember us? Yeah, Crash and Burn? Crash and Burn? Yes, I remember. You ran away like little bitches. Uh, okay, th that wasn't our fault, man. We just, we, we got a history with that guy. Uh, oh, okay, that's not what's important right now. What's important is that we want a match. We showed you. We sent you our videos. We showed you our headshots. There's everything we need. We just want a shot. Just give us a match. All we want is a match. We'll have a match against each other. We told you this already, but we'll just do it. We'll do it. You guys want a match? Yes, any kind of match. Well, then, all right, you'll get a match tonight. It'll be a handicap match. It'll be you up against that freak that you must have seen already going around backstage, going around the locker room, wherever he is, that vomcula fellow. Vom that, that guy, that weirdo, calls himself a vampire? Yeah, that's stupid, but, I mean, okay. I mean, he no, 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 you giving us a match, that's not stupid. He, him, he, he's stupid. And you know what? We'll be proud. We'll do the business proud. We'll do Dusty Rhodes proud. We'll do Ric Flair proud. We'll do even John Laurinaitis proud. We'll do everybody that respects this business proud by going after that guy and smashing him into nothing and then going out there. I've got a contract for you ready up when you're done. Yes, yes, yes. We're finally with HCW, man. Yeah, yeah. Okay, come on. We got to get stretched. We got to get ready for this creepy vomcula dude. Yeah, okay. What's going on next? Well, I do believe we're back in the arena here, back in there. We do now finally figure out who the opponent will be tonight for this gentleman out there for that vomkula freak and what's going on here oh what what what's this who's who's that emerging from the crowd there's so many emerging from the crowd i can't believe it somehow here braces on her legs jaw wired shut oh lord oh no it's bitch cancer bitch cancer is back in the building oh lord what's she gonna say I don't really think she can say anything her jaw is wired shut and this giant protective mask to cover the skull damage to her head and to her ocular bones and everything else to try to keep her head in place and her jaw in place. Now, uh... I, I don't know what the hell she's saying. I don't know either, but I'm pretty sure that at the very least, her jaw is wired shut, so trust me, if we could hear what she was saying, Whatever it is, it would be fucking insufferable. <laughs> oh, what's this? I guess, I don't know. She's calling for somebody, but who is that she's calling for? I don't know. Oh, wait, here, here he is. He's coming back there. It's Mr. Sacco. Mr. Sacco coming back into the ring. Well, what is it that you want from me now, bitch cancer? <laughs> okay. Just because I came in here and I'm going to challenge Mr. Nick and his delusions of grandeur doesn't mean I'm in league with you. 
If anything, you think you can just come on in here and make the business be rebuilt in your image. But the types of people like me or Mr. Nick, we actually know what we're talking about. And we know this business in a way that your type never do. Because we look at this business and we actually are trying to entertain people. While you're the kind who wants to go and make what you eat shit out of everyone else. You just don't want to make everyone else shit what it is you're eating. You want to make them shit out their shit from their ears, their eyes, and their nose. And maybe even through the pores of their skin for a freak like you. But not me, not my buddy Vankula, and not any of the other wrestlers that are going to be showing up here that may or may not be part of my group. And who are you to do anything about it against me or Mr. Nick? <laughs> and now who's this who's this going up oh we got someone else coming out from the crowd oh there he is who is this guy i don't know but he looks like he might be a fierce man with a body like that oh that's certainly a gentleman i don't know how someone like bitch cancer would ever be able to be in the same room with a man like this a man this buffed a man this manly and not be screwing about his toxic masculinity all day long i don't know that i don't know that one either there oklahoma now, who exactly are you, and what exactly are you doing with a woman who has bitch in her actual name? My name? Well, you really want to know? You really think that I'm not someone that you should think is dangerous? I don't know who the hell you are, so I don't know what to expect. Well, there, Mr. Sir. Just call me Hellfire, and trust me, you're going to know what it's like to burn. Hell, hell, hellfire? Hellfire? What's he doing? And now him him and Bitch Cancer are walking away. They're going in back through the crowd where they started from. And I don't know about that, but it's what's, what's happening here. What's happening? I don't know, but... Okay, let, let's get this out of the arena. Now, here we've got we've got Mr. Sacco going in. He's actually taking Splendid over here. Yes, hello there. I'm going to be announcing this match since this is my boy out there. This is my Vomkula. He's coming in here, and he's going to have himself a handicap match. If you think that having two, set, two marks like these guys, these Crash and Burn boys coming in against my boy, they got another thing coming. And now here we go. We've got Vomkula. The lots are damned. He's going in. He's got some kind of red stuff coming out of his face. I don't know what it is. It don't look like V8. I hope it's V8. Maybe it's some Clamato juice. Maybe it's some kind of wine. Trust me, Vamkula never drinks wine. That is something I can definitely guarantee you. Well, okay, now what's happening now? Okay, here's Crash and Burn coming in. And here they go. They're up. They're ready to go. High-fiving each other. Oh, yeah, I got a little chest bump going on in there. And now we've got, okay, looks like Burn is going to be standing out there while Crash gets on in. Remember, this is a handicap match. So it's going to be Vonkula all by himself up against two men. Two men who seem to be very skilled and very, very highly knowledgeable about what it takes to utilize that skill in the squared circle. Trust me, they're going down in under about three minutes. Okay, here we are. Now they're staring each other down. Who's going to make the first move? Vomkula's not the type to make the first move. Vomkula makes the last move, Oklahoma. Well, let's see what's happening on that. Oh, wait. He's pressing himself back. Oh, and... Oh! Kicks him. Kicks him right down there. Oh, he's he's dragging him up. He's pulling him back up. Oh, Vomkula, he's pulling him up by there. What's he doing? He's throwing him, throwing him into the ropes, and... Oh, Hurricane Rana. Oh, Hurricane Rana down into the back. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. He looks like he's in pain. This gentleman looks like he's in pain. I don't know, but why has he, he got his, his nose close to his neck? Why is he sniffing him? Why is he, why is he sniffing his neck? Oh, that's something you're going to be expecting from Vankula for a long time. Okay, now, what's happening? What's he doing? He's laying down there. Oh, he's holding his head. Oh, God, this young man is holding his head in pain. He's fighting to whip back up. He's fighting to get back up. He's fighting to get back up. What's he What's he trying to do? What's he trying to do? Oh, oh he's got Vakula. Oh, and ball! Von, he's, Vakula got down in a body slam. Oh, yeah, now it looks like he's running to do. Okay, now. Oh, and oh, he's grabbing him by the foot. What's he doing? He's throwing him over. 
Oh, oh no. Burns got him and oh, slams him down, slams him down into the mat, out the ring, out the ring, out the ring. Oh, wait, what's he going to do? Oh, God, no. Burns getting up there. Burns getting up there. I think Crash is now sitting in the ring watching. What are we? What's he doing? Oh, he's got him. He's got him by the back. He's got him by the back. What's he doing? Oh, oh, smash his face. Oh, right into the stairs. Oh, no. What's he? He's taking the stairs. He's taking the stairs off. What's he doing to Vomkula? He's got the stairs up and oh, into the left knee. And now. Oh, into the right knee. Now what's he doing? Oh, he's turning him over. Oh God, no, not the not the back of the knees. Not the back of the knees. Not the back of the knees. Get your ass up, Vumcula. And oh, smash them into both the backs of his knees. Oh God, he's wailing. He's screaming. This can't be good. This can't be good. This can't be good. And oh, come on. What's going on? He's getting up. Oh no, he's he's tossing them back into the arena. I can't believe it. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. It looks like Vomkill is down for the count, and now he's got something going on. What's he doing? He looks, he's dozing. I think we got ourselves another example of Queer Street tonight with this Vomkill fellow. And all that talk about being a vampire or whatever, it ain't doing you no good tonight. You're going down. Wait for it, Oklahoma. And now he's got, oh, and, oh, 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 Vomkill catches him in a shooting star press. Oh, and, oh, pile driver, pile driver, pile driver. Oh, he's rolling him over. What's he doing? Oh, he slashed his neck. He slashed his neck. What's, oh, God. Oh, 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 God. No. Oh, no. Oh, God. This is ridiculous. No. Vomkula, he's got, he's actually drinking from the neck. Oh, 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 this young man right here. This young man with a prop future ahead of him. Later, getting the laugh sucked out of him for, oh, God, no. Oh, stop this. Stop this, Mr. Sacco. Stop this. He's not going to stop until he gets his full. And now he's looking over to, oh, God, no. Oh, God, no. Crash looks terrified. Crash looks abjectly afraid. What's, what's he doing? Oh, uh, God. He, he's running away. He's running away again like a little child. Running where? Oh, no. Leaving, leaving burn down there. Bleeding out. Oh, God, no. Is he bleeding out? No. He's not going to let him bleed. Trust me. He's going to want to have another time to feed. What's he doing? He's got his hand. He's got his hand on the neck, and he's licking him up. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. How would you find this man? What the hell are you doing, Mr. Sacco? I can't believe a real vampire is here at HCW. Now what's going to happen with this man? We got to get an ambulance. We got to get this man in medical attention. Come on. And now, I can't believe it. And believe it. Trust me, Oklahoma. And trust me, everybody. And trust me, this boy is going to need medical attention. And I'm going to see to it he's going to get the medical attention. And what's going to become of them? Well, that's all going to be what you'll have on next week's HCW Monday Madness. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun one, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. And, of course, uh, we've got some talk about Mike Tyson. Although I did like there was, a, I mentioned before, that public speaking thing that happened. It was some kind of Q&A segment someplace like that where they had a bunch of people from the WWF and the Attitude Era on stage with Mike Tyson. And it, they were specifically talking about what happened with the crossover with Mike Tyson at WrestleMania 14. And ever since then, at Tyson and Stone Cold, they've done things. But the way that Tyson messes with Austin by calling him Cold Stone. And that, that was years before Cold Stone Creamery became a thing. But now I'm wondering what's the what kind of dollar dollar tip what's going to happen. Would you like to go to a Cold Stone Creamery and there is Stone Cold right there? Keeps calling me Cold Stone while I decided to go and actually get myself a job at Cold Stone. Come on. And then you got, you know, there the, you drop in the tip and they got to sing for you. I don't know whose idea it was, but it is a creative novelty to go to a, have an ice cream parlor. And there you go. They have to sing for you. Tip, tip, hooray. <laughs> because some people just like to ball big that way. Yes. And yes, Nick, I did sell my one Bob Ross Deadpool at a convention thanks to one Mr. John Gennardi, who, and that was on day one. And you actually would have seen that if you go back and rewatch the live stream for day one of the Great Lakes Comic Con this year. I asked where I streamed live from my table. Yes, you would have seen John Gennardi right there on camera buying it up. And then I saw him stay two when we were talking and he talked about his own art and all that and how he, he asked me 
about he, he told he complimented me on my inking. So specifically, you never know. That might be he might want me to do some inking or something like that for him in the future. And that's the that's the the the, the uh, a very good particular brand of people to have. And uh, you're you, when it comes to a customer base, when it comes to having people who want your art, is the fact that they don't just want to go and you know buy up what it is you're selling at the convention or at a store, but also gentlemen like that, refined gentlemen like that, who might want to go and also get you involved in some other comic project that they specifically are doing. That is certainly a case of entertainment for myself. And that's why going out there, and also there's the gentleman, I wish I did catch his name and get some information. I mentioned before about the one who was one of those vendors. He, he was not a vendor, he was a customer there. And uh, John Gennardi, for those who don't know, and it's spelled G-I-N-A-R-D-I, is one of my subscribers who's also a regular. Actually, I first contacted him through Instagram when I believe he left a comment on an Instagram post. And then I went and messaged him and gave him the link to the channel all that he subscribed. And now he's been a regular viewer of these streams. And he explained also when we were talking, he was complimenting me on my inking in some kind of unspecified detail in the future about me inking for him on something. He did also mention that when watching when watching these because of his work hours, that also means that he's not always able to go and really join in live, which okay, I understand. As as long as you watch, there that's why. I keep the streams on. I know there are people like that who will have the live stream and then they'll go and immediately either delete it or have it set to private. I don't do that. I might do that with maybe some like streams from a past time from maybe a few years back or so. I might. I and mean, there's no definite there. But that is the thing where, yes, I know that not everybody here who watches is going to go and watch at that exact time. And that's why for those either if you're watching it then or you're watching it now, I appreciate I can't be like the uh, Ethan Van Skyver stream that happened earlier where it was the middle of the afternoon. I had it on my phone while I, was, uh, I went to Target today and I looked, I saw, you would have sent on my Instagram story the photo where the WWE toys at my local Target, they had right next to each other on the rack, Cowboy Bob and Randy Orton. That was a little father and son piece right there. And yes, you would have seen I added and uh, mentioned Randy Orton in the the post. So I haven't gotten any response yet, but I just found an interesting little father son detail. And above them, though, what I didn't show you was the racks upon racks of Hurricane. Yeah, Hurricane, you know, Shane Helms, Hurricane. He was one of the few guys to transition from WCW to WWE that had any kind of success. He wasn't like a major event guy, but he did have like title wins, like Intercontinental and I think the hardcore titles. I famously I think it was a he had hardcore Holly with him as a sidekick where they would go around in the Hura cycle until she smacked him over the head with a frying pan. And that's how their their tag team ended. They, they, they can't all be winners like that. That's I know another one was I mentioned the one customer, the one guy who I did not get it catch his name, let alone get his contact information or anything, but he did go and I told you he bought the recreation of the Al Williamson Star Wars cover for that that introduced the bounty hunters. It was one of the issues in their adaptation of Empire Strikes Back. Yes, one of those kind of men. One of those kind of men you see at conventions that has a uh, large wallet with them and very expensive tastes in the world of comic collectors who go to these conventions. And he just happened to have a nice looking, fresh Cyber Frog hoodie on. I happen to have a Cyber Frog couple of drawing there in the portfolio that got him and i was able to cut a deal for him for the cyber frog drawing and the spider the star wars piece and the the complimentary with everyone you see i do i draw in pairs of color and in pen and ink and for those who would like to see I can take a stop a little bit and there is the pen and ink piece of the uh, cyber frog one i drew where yes i did this and the other one was the one i did in color that's the one that sold and this is right up there on my square store right now of course pop culture illustrations if you want to go and see what's going on in there it's 25 like the rest of my pen and ink illustrations and it's now that the color one was sold that one's feeling a little lonely but not as lonely as mark brooks has to feel with how much of a jackass he's proven himself to be but remember this is the same industry where 
a guy like Walt Simonson, a guy who's drawing professionally since the 70s, and his most recent work he was doing, I think, with Image Comics, Ragnarok, where, of course, for those who don't know, Walt Simonson, yes, he started professionally working in comics in the 70s, and he started working, doing things for Marvel and DC, and even did work for other outlets, like I think, I know for sure, Heavy Metal. Yes, the Aliens official comic book adaptation from back when the movie came out that was initially serialized publication through Heavy Metal magazine, that was Simonson's work. And then he went and made himself a star by taking over writer-artist duties on Thor. And from issue one of that, he went and made it a big popular seller again. And there's the anecdote about Simonson walking into a comic shop in New York to get himself a copy. And in there, the, the guy running the store said, no, that all the copies of that new issue of Thor were all sold out. And now there's a, there was somebody I saw, some editor on Twitter who was talking about how when it comes to who gets hired and what, uh, a class act, a decades long Hall of Fame veteran like Walt Simonson, they call, he now gets dismissed as a nostalgia act. In the, and in the twisted ideology of post all new Marvel now, woke shit Marvel, yeah, a guy like him who does not is not amenable to you know comic skate, but is still a guy who draws superheroes where you have men who don't look like they get all their best health and exercise and diet tips from Pat Oswalt, and women that don't look like the kind of women you would see from a gender studies course at you know University of Oregon. Of course, that means he's somebody who they'll still dismiss and try not to give work, even there, or they'll even though the recent thing he did with his wife, Louis Simonson, where they did a little mini series of the X factor. Cause when the X factor originally was put in print in the mid eighties, it was them as the creative team, the Simonsons, Walter and Louise or Wheezy. Yes. Wheezy as in the Jeffersons and for a writer artist duo who was consistently moving on up. Now they have this place where they aren't of that type that they can go and get them thrown out from and be unemployable over on account of political views. But yes, yeah, somehow I bet you the people over there at Marvel who are shitting a brick over their hemorrhaging sales probably do appreciate the actual spike in sales from something that's made by an artist and a writer team who are actually really fucking skilled have been proving how really fucking skilled they are for decades on end. And people actually really into comics, not into comics as a bunch of insufferable pinko agitprop, Look at Simonson working to this day and being able to keep himself up to a high level. Remember, this is a man, Simonson, who I believe is in his 70s, and he's been drawing and working for decades. And if you compare the recent stuff he's been doing with that Ragnarok comic, which is him completely doing his own version of the Norse myths. Yeah, if you look at the, the he always had an interest in the Norse myths. And when he took over doing Thor, he really brought a sense of real knowledge and real passion for the myths as well as the the mythos of specifically the Marvel comics of Thor before him. And yet, yes, that's a thing. That was the theme of today's video I did about, you know, respect. And the way of success in particularly in comics is, of course, respect for the audience and also for respecting the audience's wishes and the customization of what you're doing. Like when I do Deadpool, of course, what is the kind of customer base? I will tailor towards what kind of Deadpool are they into? Is it going to be a Bob Ross Deadpool? Or is it going to be you know, Deadpool by himself in his classic outfit that we know? Or is it going to be Deadpool in some other kind of silly costume? These are the things I consider. And these are the things I bet you those Marvel editors considered when they went and did that, nostal that nostalgia piece of the... Louise and Walter Simonson working on the right there. And yes, Louise Simonson, of course, the way that the present day assholes, the way that your Vita Ayala's and Heather Antos's and Max Asagio's try to say it, where there was no such thing as anybody that wasn't straight male and white working in the business until it became a business where you were under penalty of social media threats of bigotry, you would have to go and hire these you, you had to go and get these diversity quotas instead of hiring people who are actually worth it and considering that literally the highest selling comic book artist of all time is a first generation american from south korea he's not even that he was born in seoul south korea so that's a detail i'm correcting yes unlike uh mags visaggio 
or the jet or Tom Tyler over there to Taylor. Yes. Tom Taylor going over there, working on this new Superman stuff. If I was incorrect on something, yes, I'll correct that pronto. So yes, he was born Jim Lee in Seoul, South Korea. And that's probably why he's so much more talented than all these other assholes who have nothing to say, but their sexual or pimping their sexual orientation or their skin color or their gender is because yes, Jim Lee had soul, and he was a super bad mamma jamma. Because he's got soul, and he's super bad. Yeah! Unlike the artists or writers today, where you're, ja you're conceited assholes like a Steve Orlando, who probably are going to go on Twitter and not along with, yes, yes, Walt Simonson and his wife, oh, they're just nostalgia acts. Even though... Louise, yeah, the, the wife of Mr. Simonson there, Louise, was a long-running writer from the 1970s onwards whose track record in comics includes having created a co-created Apocalypse, you know, the monster that killed Superman, she being one of the main writers behind the Death of Superman storyline, one of the biggest high-selling comic books of all time, also co-created Apocalypse with her husband in the early issues of X Factor out of the necessity of both of them agreeing, you know, them being creators and, and also being husband and wife, that yes, this guy, the, the X Factor, they needed to separate them from the other New Mutants and the regular X-Men titles, so they needed their own villain. They need somebody that could match Magneto or maybe even surpass him. And thus, they came up with a character literally calling himself Apocalypse. So that's why I look at these people and... I can imagine, and, and also that, that bitch Vita Ayala, and there was the new editorial jobs and writer's jobs opening up at Marvel, and she was tweeting, yelling at anybody that isn't fitting some kind of diversity quota, and, and no one's straight, no one's straight male or white, and there actually was a long time, one of the editors, who I believe back in the 90s during the Milestone productions, yes, Milestone, they were an imprint of DC that was black superheroes done by black creators, and this one guy who I believe was a writer for them back in the day uh, even responded to her on social media saying, basically, she's telling me, she's telling me a black man to not go for, to not try and get this job on the crime of being a hetero black man. Saying that it's only people that fit this, uh, you know, sentient uh, Twitter pronoun police as if this is what people buy their comics by. Uh, they don't. And considering me once again, having a hugely successful table at Motor City Comic Con, like I had here, and I think I told you before, when walking past, lucky for me, I'm thankful to Mr. DeSantis, who runs the Great Lakes Comic Con, to have my table as far away from that one crazy bitch's table as I could. Yes, there was the 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 walking Twitter pronoun that was sitting next to me at the Motor City Comic Con. Well, she had a table at that one, too. But it was all the way on the opposite side. And I mentioned before about this couple at Motor City who saw me with my WCW belt. And they asked and they asked me to go look at it. And they mentioned now the, uh, the husband in the couple was working the independent wrestling scene in Michigan for a good decade or so. And now they work in publishing. Now they do a comic. And yeah, they were talking their stuff. They have, I think they, they had comics as well as print novels. And that's what they were going in there and they were plugging. And overhearing them, when it came to, they had somebody going by, like, hey, you know, what's this? What you doing? They were in there and they were selling. They were selling. They actually had an Honest to God comic with an Honest to God story. And for all the oxygen that gets sucked up by these Steve Orlando types, these Max Asagio types, I wish that we could be able to get them all the way over there towards this nice couple over there who were going and they were doing, they were doing. I mentioned earlier in my video today about Mr. Todd McFarlane and how he ought to go and do some kind of sales training seminar or like a business seminar for the people in comics, whether they're working independently or not, or in the present day when it comes towards how crowdfunding is working. He's a guy who I would really compare Todd McFarlane to Stan Lee because he has that Stan Lee-like talent for not just having the skill to make comics that bring in an honest to God audience, but also to be able to sell them really well. He's able to sell them better. He's able to promote the work and himself. And then the major difference between a Stan Lee and now in modern day, a Tom McFarlane and a Mag Zasaggio is they have nothing to sell, nothing to talk about, nothing to think about, but themselves. They are, it's entirely based on conceited grandstanding 
and nothing to do with actually selling a story. Their Twitter pronouns are what their material they come up with is supposed to be, and there's nothing else to it. They, if you went and try to get them to go and write an issue of Spider-Man that was actually really about Spider-Man being Spider-Man, not about some BIPOC Muslim crap, they would be utterly at a loss for words. Actually, actually, no, I stand corrected. They wouldn't be at a loss for words. They would start immediately screaming at you for doing that and then calling for you to be fired and unemployable and left on the streets starving to death for daring to tell them that you should not be doing this. While McFarlane, on the other hand, he's out there wheeling and dealing, running and going, moving and moving, moving and shaking, like Stan Lee did when there was no big kind of media for the comic book business as there was in that time in the early 90s. He pretty much went and had to go and make it himself. And when they started getting letters with the Fantastic Four in the early issues, they started getting these fan letters. And that's when he started printing them in the back pages of Fantastic Four and really started interacting with them and also putting in the Stan Soapbox segment. And he was doing all this to really interact with the audience, positive audience interaction as well as going up with more characters and more things, as I was saying in the earlier video, it's you have that audience there and expansion or at the very least consistent success in that kind of creative outlet involves maintaining your fans, maintaining that fan base by respecting them and also finding a different fan base, finding more on there to build that brand if you're going to use that. Like McFarlane did with uh, Spawn initially, and then by going in there and doing McFarlane toys and really putting his work on there, he was able to take what he was able to do with the Spawn toys, or Todd's toys it was initially called, and I went and tracked down on YouTube the commercials for when Todd's toys were originally put out there in, I believe, 1994. And there, you see them, him doing TV ads like that, he was putting his face out there into the public and going and doing, you know, TV interviews, going on the radio, working the convention circuit. He was building and building and building. And Stan Lee doesn't really get, they don't really mention it, but when things really started cooking for Marvel in the 60s, he also was going on public speaking tours through colleges. There's even an audio recording of one of them. I believe it took place at Princeton, where he first announced that Steve Ditko was going to be leaving Spider-Man. And you could hear some people hissing in the crowd. And he mentions, oh, there's a new artist now that's going to be working, collaborating with me, John Ramita. And I trust me, after a while, those hisses will turn to cheers. And Spider-Man was always was doing well with Ditko. But then you brought in the Ramita charm, the Ramita quality of artwork, the Ramita style with the, the romance comics that he was known for doing. And it wound up actually doing better. They took what they had gone. And it wasn't just a matter of expanding the audience with having, you know, another kind of comic like, OK, let's do the Hulk. And now let's have Thor and let's have the Avengers and all that. It's also that audience you had before with Spider-Man will make a bigger audience for Spider-Man. Like if, uh, say, later on in the 90s, you had Tom McFarlane only wanted to do Spawn as a comic, then that whole empire with toys wouldn't have happened because he went there and not, okay, I want all these pillars of success for Spawn to have. And these other pillars being video games and cartoons and movies and toys. And he went out there, whether through his own money, like he did with Todd's Toys and putting up his own money to start his own toy company, or going and finding people that are going to go and really work, collaborate with them in the way that fits the kind of standard he wants, that kind of creativity he wants, like ha what happened with the Spawn video game that initially was on the Super Nintendo, and then, of course, later on with him doing other games and also starting his own animation studio to do McFarlane Productions to do the Spawn cartoon, which then went and did things for Pearl Jam, cartoon music videos for Pearl Jam, and also Disturbed. I mean, that's what really got me into McFarland was I saw the the video for the Disturbed cover of Land of Confusion where McFarland, uh, his company, his animation studio, did the music video for. And then looking at the other ones, like, I believe he won a Grammy for the video that he made for Pearl Jam's Do the Evolution. Yes. And that's what, that was the kind of key to success is building that and building that. And I'd like to see that couple sitting next to me. They went there. They had something. I, I wish they could get to the level where either they're completely immune to any kind of consequence from these social justice jackals or that they're the kind of people who go and work and work and able to maintain 
this exceptional level, this exceptional creativity with what they do, like uh, Jim Lee. Hence why Jim Lee, even in present day comic book industry, he's never had to fall back on just telling you he's Korean over and over and over. He's still a guy who goes in there and can draw like a fiend, bring down the house. He is the showstopper. He is Mr. Comics, Jim Lee. So that also puts a little chink in the armor when it comes towards people wanting to say about the comic book industry was only for the white men. Uh, you got this little crane dude over here who was pre-med at Princeton and decided to go into drawing comic books and has succeeded like a complete fiend. Although knowing the stereotypical, the, the Asian parents, when they they want their kids to be doctors or lawyers or whatever, probably look, were not too, let's say they were nonplussed by their son's choice of changing careers. And I bet you, maybe even now, there's still some reticence about that with his family, with his parents, about leaving the business, uh, leaving the business of being in medicine because his parents were both doctors, if I'm remembering that biographical detail correct. Yes, they're supposed to be. That's, that's the kind of way that Asian parents can be. And yes, we've got Barb Rogers, Little Miss Sunburn with triple hearts in the chat. Everybody cheer Barb Rogers, Little Miss Sunburn. And also, let's go and bring on out, since she's here, let's show her off again. Yes, the Cyberfrog Pen and Ink illustration that I know some comic skaters out there would like to see right there. Hawking the wares, bringing the wares, expanding the wares. Well, here are my wares of the, the mascot for the whole comic skate movement right there, Cyberfrog. And this, the color piece may have been sold at the Great Lakes Comic Con, but this one is for sale in the pop culture illustrations category in my online store. It looks great up there on your wall. Yes. And yes, Nick, it was you who bought me that Detroit Lions jacket. I remember just seeing that on a whim being available on Amazon and just put it on my piece, put it on my wish list. And I sincerely thank you for getting me that because it's a lot more of an eye catcher at conventions than whatever I'd been wearing before. No. So yes, when I put that on and I'm out there on the floor, as the song said that opened the first movie, the heat is on. Yes. <laughs> now uh, it's the matter of, although on Amazon, I could not find the Mumford High School shirt to go with the, the jacket. That's a... Uh, that's the, the full the full get up with the Eddie Murphy in those movies. You gotta get the jack. You've gotta get yes the jacket there, but then also you've gotta get the Mumford High shirt to go with it. And I've not been able to find that. No. And talk about success and about expanding like that. Yeah, Eddie Murphy could have been a successful comedian, whatever, just being another kind of comedian who's all about his blackness. And yes, he was certainly a comedian who had a lot of, of his blackness in his act, but he also was smart enough to entertain, entertain, and go and bring in the kind of charisma, the kind of showmanship that he became a huge international success. Honest to God, rock star in stand-up and also as a comedy actor to the point of one of the big blockbusters of the year 1984 being a comedy that's a star vehicle for a Saturday Night Live cast member. Although, uh, lucky for his case, it wasn't based on any like recurring Saturday Night Live character because... Wayne's World and the Blues Brothers are only the ever two that succeeded. So that's another case of Murphy having that Stanley Todd McFarlane uh, wisdom and what to do with their business. And they all three did really, really well. And now let's see if uh, those returning viewers and those new viewers out there, like, you know, Nick, Mildred, Christopher, and all that, and of course, Barb. Rogers and of course John Gennardi. Let's see if all of you can go out there and help spread the word for the sake of also what I promised Nick about doing a new color piece of Leon from Resident Evil 2. Well, it's a work in progress, but I will have this done. Yes, I'll also, uh, Nick, I'll send you an email with a photo attachment of this when it's finished later on because now we have ourselves a finished Deadpool Bob Ross. I thank everyone tonight for watching. Anyone out there who has not subscribed to the channel yet, of course, go ahead and do that. And do not forget that all of you new or returning can go and help out the channel by following that first link in the description below to my art store. Pen and ink illustrations like this are 25 bucks. I've got color drawings for 20 bucks. I've got sketchbooks 
both pre-printed and handmade, full of original art that are 25 bucks as well. Like this one for my Tuesday video, where I've now been recreating the covers of Todd McFarlane's run on Spider-Man, the one he wrote and drew himself. And of course, issue four's cover that I did today. And if you like this, even though this is not done yet, it's a work in progress where I recreated Frank Miller's work on Daredevil covers, the Jack Kirby fourth world covers from all the titles from Mr. Miracle to the New Gods to the Forever People to Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. And now the McFarlane Spider-Man series, you can get this when it's finished, but uh, that will be a pre-order. You can pre-order this sketchbook before it's finished by going into that link in the description below to my online art store and donating a hundred bucks. A hundred dollar donation will get you this sketchbook before it is finished. And then when it is done, I will ship it out to you free shipping and handling for that hundred dollar donation. And just so you can see how many spots there are, we got three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, uh, 21, 22 slots left, 22 sheets left in this sketchbook. That's taken me a long time to go and do. So you can still go out there and pre-order that at a time. $100 donation, we'll pre-order you this piece. And also, don't forget the progress on my own comic I'm developing, Tanya, Lady of the Blade. Besides here on the channel, it's also getting chronicled through my Instagram and my Getter, which are linked below in the description as well. So follow me there. And don't forget, I also have an Amazon wish list in case you're interested on my behalf that way. I'll be live again tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, and I will have a new upload tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern. Deadpool welcomes you, as well as Cyberfrog. So remember, felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.